Hello, hello, and welcome to another In the Kitchen with Melissa cooking video. I'm so excited you're here in my kitchen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So tonight I'm gonna make one of my all-time favorite recipes that I've created. I created this recipe about three or four years ago, and we had had some guests over for dinner, and I had made it for them. My husband and I fell in love with it the first time we had it. And then we had his brother and his girlfriend at the time over for dinner. And I'm like, I'm going to make sweet potato lasagna. And they both totally raved about it. And my husband is like, you got to put this on your website. And I was like, Ooh, it's a little time consuming. And I thought, you know what? Why not? There's always ways to make recipes simple and easy and most importantly, fun. So what I've done is I've prepared the sauce. First, I shredded the cheese, sliced the, the mushrooms. I have a bag of spinach here, already washed. Don't need to do anything with that. And I pre-cooked the meat, the ground meat this afternoon. So you could do that. Just cook it all in advance. The sweet potatoes, hence the name, sweet potato lasagna. I sliced those and cooked those up. So you could do that in advance, like a couple days in advance, the night before the morning of, and just store it in the fridge. Okay, this I just did this a little while ago, so it's just been staying warm on the stovetop. Um, but you could easily do all this in advance, and then now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take five or 10 minutes and put this whole thing together, pop it in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then we're going to have a delicious meal. So what I do is, it's very easy. I just use tongs for the sweet potatoes and I just I just cut them, like slice them. You could use a mandolin. I just did it like by hand with a chef's knife and I boiled them for about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. I didn't really time it, but just until it's soft. And it's really great to, so what I'm doing now real quick before I jump into that is I'm just layering the bottom of my casserole dish or Pyrex baking pan, whatever you want to use with the sweet potatoes, just like you would lasagna noodles if you're making lasagna. Um, so it's super easy to do. Um, the benefit of boiling potatoes rather than sauteing them, roasting them is the glycemic index goes down a little bit. So what does that mean? Okay. So that means if you, if, you have a strong reaction, which most people do, to starchy food. So that means like you're, you have a spike in blood sugar. So you have all this energy and then all of a sudden you don't have any energy. So that's basically, it, it happens very frequently with diabetics, pre-diabetics, and a lot of people who eat a lot of processed food. Well, when you eat potatoes, you know, even if you're on a low carb diet, you know, low carb eating style like primal, paleo, keto even, having the occasional sweet potato or even white potato, it's up to you, is actually really good for you. It's really great for replenishing. Like if you're doing a lot of high intensity interval training, it's a really great way to um, replenish your, your glycogen your glucose stores, which is, that's the fuel your body uses when you do these kind of workouts. So anyway, so it's really good, but boiling them decreases, uh, helps your body digest them better and you don't get that sugar spike. So, all right. So I have one, about one layer. It's not going to be just like lasagna. It's going to be a little messy when it comes out, but the combination, oh my gosh, it's so good. So uh, of course the recipe's all on my website and I will put a link to it down below and remember to subscribe below. Um, but I used about three sweet potatoes. It depends on the casserole dish that you use. I used to use a little bit bigger one. So I used to do four sweet potatoes, but this one I only did three uh, about medium sized sweet potatoes. So I'm just gonna start putting some sauce on. And this is just one can of tomato sauce. I put a can of tomato paste on there and you could just kind of um, smooth it around. Just make sure it's, it doesn't need to be totally even. Not a big deal. Um, so 
just like that. So it's just a can of tomato sauce from Trader Joe's, um, a can of tomato paste. I put a tablespoon of, um, I'm just gonna put some meat on. I put a tablespoon of olive oil and then a tablespoon of Italian seasoning in the sauce, just mixed it together. Um, and you could do a meatless. I have done, I have made this before without any meat in it with just the vegetables. So I'm gonna put some spinach on there. The spinach is really good in it. And then I'm also going to throw on some mushrooms. Ooh, we love mushrooms. Now it might be a little bit watery because of the sweet potatoes and the mushrooms. When mushrooms cook, a lot of water comes out of them, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna do this. Put a layer. This is like, I think, eight mushrooms sliced. Um, I love this recipe because honestly, there's really no exact measurements and I love that. When I cook in the kitchen, I kind of like to freestyle it. Sometimes I grab a recipe um, and follow it point by point, like exactly. My husband is one of those where um, he likes to follow the recipe exactly the measurements, directions, everything. So, okay. So I have some mozzarella cheese here. We don't do a lot of cheese in our house. So I normally would do, I think the original recipe has like three cups of mozzarella. I think this is only like two cups. So it's not that much, but that's okay. You could omit the cheese. You could um, do dairy-free cheese. There's a lot of really great high quality um, plant-based cheeses out there that you can use um, that are made with like nuts, like almonds, cashews. If you want some suggestions, I have some. Um, we have a friend who actually owns a company that makes plant-based cheeses. Um, so reach out to me. She makes, her company makes really good cheeses um, if you could tolerate nuts. So I'm just gonna keep layering. Um, or you could just even omit the cheese. You don't have to have the cheese. Like I said, we just have it occasionally. For us, it's kind of like a treat. So we, since we rarely have it tonight, I thought, well, we'll treat ourselves to a little bit of dairy. And the thing with eating foods like whole foods that have nutrients in them that maybe your body doesn't totally agree with is um, be okay like give yourself permission to enjoy them if it's one that you really want to enjoy. If you have celiac and I don't have gluten, I don't encourage that. If, it, if you like, if you have peanut allergy and you go into anaphylactic shock, don't have them. <laughs> don't eat peanuts. But if it's just like you get tummy aches, you get a little bit of inflammation, which is exactly what happens to me. I just know the consequences. I'm okay with them. I do my best not to complain about them because sometimes it's like, oh, well, I know better. Okay, so we have another layer. I'm just gonna pour some more sauce on and you could put as much sauce as you want. If you have leftovers, just save it and use it another day. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of dump the rest of the sauce on because I like sauce. So I'm just gonna dump this on. So I usually do about two layers. Two layers. You can see it's pretty thick. I will show you in a sec. Okay. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Oh, oh my God. I'm so excited. Mm. Italian's one of my favorite foods. So you could see. There's the layer, there's that. So you can see it's pretty close to the top. Oh, I'm gonna put some meat on. I'll probably just put the rest of this meat on the top. And this is really great because you could make this in advance and then after you cook it, just let it kinda, I love how like all the like sauces just kinda marinate in them overnight. So I love making Italian sauces overnight. And I'm just gonna do some more mushrooms. 
Um, and this will last, like we're not gonna eat all this tonight, um, but we'll have leftovers and you can freeze it and just heat it up another time. So you can make this in advance. Um, put some more spinach. So I just have a bag of organic spinach from Trader Joe's. I think the recipe calls for about two cups, my original recipe, but you know, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think, I wanna say we've added broccoli to it before too, some cooked broccoli. I can't remember, but just play with it and have fun with it. Um, it's exciting. And if you are one of those who I do know a few other people other than my husband, um, that are like that and i had this one gal a coaching client a while back she's like oh so i tried i wanted to make this recipe i can't remember what it was and i thought wow but i don't really know how to make it how i want it and i didn't like the seasoning from this recipe but i like this method so i kind of married them together and it turned out really great and it was so fun i'm like yes like that's what that's what being, being in the kitchen should be fun and it should be enjoyable because you're more likely to do it and to cook your own food. So look at this beauty. So I might just kind of push it down a little bit. It's pretty big, pretty high. I've never made it in this dish before, but um, that's okay. We'll see how it is and I'm going to the oven's preheated to 400 degrees, so I am going to pop it in the oven and I'm gonna come back when it's done and I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and check it and just see if the cheese is browned. So I'll see you when it's done. Okay, I just took the sweet potato lasagna out of the oven and it looks delicious, it smells amazing. And um, so I actually adjusted the temperature. I bumped it up to 425 and I put it in for 30 minutes. So remember, I would encourage you check it after 25 minutes and at 425 and just kind of see how your oven is because all ovens are different, which it could vary five by five, 10, 15 minutes. So, Anyways, but I wanted to show you how beautiful this sweet potato lasagna is. If you could see it, it's nice and brown on top. And if you don't like it that much, that brown, just like I said, cook it for 20 minutes and then check it, or 25 minutes and then check it. And then just kind of keep checking it every few minutes. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. This is a really, really great fall meal. And like I said earlier, it's super easy to just assemble if you cook the meat and make the potatoes in advance and you could buy shredded cheese. I prefer freshly grated cheese because there's not like the cake, the cakey stuff in it to make sure it doesn't all stick together. Um, like the store-bought already shredded. So anyways, try this recipe out, experiment with it. Like I said before, I encourage you to do that with more recipes in your life and you will enjoy being in the kitchen more. So thank you so much for watching. I love, love, love this recipe. So I cannot wait to dive into it tonight. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.